William Fitzsimmons. Nice to meet you. Hello, hello. Um, I want to start off with your trademark, the beard. I, I don't know what you. Oh, the beard. Yeah. Don't you yeah. ever grow tired of it? Um, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I'm. I'm I get kind of lazy and I don't think about it. So I just even if I shave, it just pops up again. But uh, no, I uh, no, I kind of I kind of like having it. You know, yeah. But sometimes I wish I didn't have it. Yeah. <laughs> But it has become a trademark now, so you have to keep it. Yeah, a little bit. Well, I feel like whenever I've made little jokes, it, it shows stuff about cutting it off. People have, have booed very loudly, so it, it makes me a little afraid to take it off. Like they, I think everyone would leave if I did, you know. Well, when did you make the decision to start growing it in the first place? I actually, um, it, it was a family thing. All the, uh, my father and my uncles and all the men in the Fitzsimmons clan uh, they they have they all have beards and so when I was a kid we just thought it was normal you know we'd see your dad and he had this, had this nice beard and um, yeah so I grew on uh, in college and university first chance I could once I actually had it wasn't just two little hairs you know um, yeah and then I just kinda, I just kind of kept it and I you know when I was working in psychology it's very you know, Sigmund Freud and everything. It's appropriate, so I just kept it. Uh, are appearances uh, important for you at all? Well, not really. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I don't think so. I, I mean, I, don't, I, I, I probably think about it very, very little. You know. Um, no, I, I, uh, I, I probably don't look as good as maybe I should for being in front of people playing music, but. Uh, no, I'd rather, I'd rather sound good than, than look good. Yeah. Uh, in a previous interview with us uh, about the Sparrow and the Crow, mm -hmm. you said that it was kind of embarrassing to, uh, to go up to uh, people and say you were wrong about something because that was what the last yeah. record was about. Perhaps. Right. Do you still feel that way? Is it still hard to...? Uh, it's easier now because I, I did it in a very um, open and sort of public, you know, public way. Um, I mean, it's always hard, you know, uh, to admit something like that. But uh, no, it's it's a lot easier now because the result was good. I felt like in doing that, I I became healthier, so it was very rewarding, you know. Uh, and I feel I feel a lot better than I did, you know, two or three years ago. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm more open to saying when I've been a jerk or I've been I've been wrong now, which still happens. But is it still hard to go back to that period when you were on stage playing those songs? I, I can yeah. imagine that it can be quite a oh, yeah. tough thing. Oh yeah, yeah. I was. I remember the last last show I played. That was not with new music yet. Was with that the Spare and the Crow record, and I finished. I felt this this great like relief. You know, I was like, wow, I don't have to play a whole show with those songs because they're very they're very heavy for me. I'm sure they're heavy for the audience too. So it was, um, it was kind of a relief. Uh, and yeah, I still feel heavy when I play those songs, you know, some of the older ones, but now that there's new music, it helps to balance it out. It's not as, it's not as dark anymore. Yeah. yeah, because it was a sad record. Very, yeah. What is the best thing that happened to you since? Um, I, I spent time trying to deal with uh, my a lot of my sicknesses, like my psychological, you know, issues that I think sort of caused the decisions I made, and the uh, I I just worked on myself, you know. I tried to get healthier emotionally and mentally, and that's been the best thing, you know, because I, I think I, I think I genuinely feel better now than I did um, m maybe ever, you know, because I've just sort of always. Uh, like most people, you just kind of go day to day and um, never really deal with all the, you know, the dark stuff that's, <laughs> that's coming after you. So, yeah, uh, that, that's been it, just working on myself. Yeah. But what are those sicknesses? Does it sound really... Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's a lot of different, <laughs> different things. There's d different things from my childhood and, and uh, you know, different diagnoses that I've been given over the years and depression and... Um, uh, anxiety and just certain things like that and uh, yeah it's taken time and I've had to make decisions that I was going to deal with them instead of just try to have a better day that I was gonna you know 
go see someone and talk about it or just do whatever it would take to get better. Was it also about letting some things go that you had in your life? Like yeah. Cutting people <laughs> off or? Well, it was letting go is a good way to put it. Yeah, that, that was maybe one of the biggest things was I had to, um, I had to be willing to move on. Because even, you know, I wrote, I wrote the record, right, Sparrow and the Crow. And I thought that once, once I wrote it, everything would be better. You know, I, I, okay, it's out of me now. It's good. And then that didn't happen. And I thought, well, I'm going to sing it now. I'll play the shows, and then I'll be very cathartic. And then I'll be done. You know, didn't happen. You know? And uh, it wasn't until um, I, I got home, and I was not touring, and I was quiet and alone, and um, I was able to um, yeah, just let it go, whatever that means. I don't know how you, it looks to let something go, but um, to make a commitment that the things that happened were in the past and everything that happened now is, you know, present and future. Because uh, it's hard, you know, when you have relationships that last for many years and, and you're with people and all of a sudden that changes. It's hard to just wake up and, and start over.